recording? Recording. Uh, uh, yes, it's recording. Oh, right. Hold right, on. over to you then, Silvana. Okay. Wait, I can't make it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One second. Okay. All right. So, hold Freddy. Um, oh. So, my creative concepts idea initially was how I initially interpreted the piece. So, um, the main themes that stuck out to me um, was time, ex ex uh -oh, existentialism, and humanity. Um, I want to talk a bit about how kind of I visualized the time aspect because I think it um, it's quite important for my concept. Um, for me, I think the piece was um, didn't show a clear like linear construct of time and it felt almost um, stuck in a loop when with like Estragon and um, Vladimir continuously like talking about waiting for Godot and like asking um, if this happened or this didn't happen and it almost felt like he was in an, another dimension uh, which these um, this reminded me of like the subject of um, surrealism in art because so if surrealism if you don't know it's a movement that developed in Europe after World War One. Um, and a big influence was um, Dada, which was a movement that happened during World War One, where um, where artists would write or paint their uh, perspective of all the like negative influence that the war had. And I think a big aspect to surrealism is something called automat automatism which is when artists kind of record their thoughts they're like unconscious thoughts and then they would um build a composition which juxtaposes like the images and um it to me almost like feels like a fever dream-esque um feeling that the paintings kind of get and I think this links really well with um what um the, in the initial play kind of was um themed if that makes sense um for example um I think it links well with the theatre of the absurd, that kind of um, uh, negative aspect of of viewing world like the world or kind of like questioning the world, and so so that's why I wanted to keep the uh, Samuel Beckett to kind of inspire the piece and um, to keep it like linked. And I think that it would work really nicely with my concept. And I really, but I wanted it to be more experimental, a bit more fresh. I feel like I wanted a bit of a f something more different. Um, so I think that adding Brecht would be nice to kind of make the audience think and um, really get them involved during the performance. Um, for the actual characters themselves, I was thinking of having Vladimir and Estragon have a grandson and granddad relationship. So having Estragon being the grandson and Vladimir being the granddad and this kind of shows how at different points in your life you can still have this um like trying to figure out kind of how 
how to view the world and everything. So having Vladimir looking back on his life and uh, and kind of reminiscing and Estragon having not knowing really what is planned ahead. So that's what I wanted to bring. And I think having um, um, them a bit more modern, I wanted it set um, a more present day. So I wanted Vladimir obviously having a more casual clothes with jeans and and like but still a little bit preppy-ish kind of and Vladimir being um just like a casual <laughs> like a uh granddad look with the vest and the like shirt underneath um for Pozo and Lucky I wanted them to be kind of really separate from the rest of the piece I wanted them to stand out and kind of be the reality of um the world and how it like the world kind of keeps on moving even if you're struggling or or trying to figure out what you're doing um so I was thinking of having Pozo be this uh, big oops big Corp, um, corporate like CEO or head of some kind of big corporation and showing that hierarchy of him being on top and then Lucky being um, just another worker working at his corporation and um, I would have Lucky have just a normal jeans and shirt or, or even t-shirt but be a little bit like disheveled and a bit not clean um, to show his like labor and his work ethic and everything. And instead of a rope, I wanted chains um, on the foot because I feel like that shows um, the weight of um, the job I'm being like chained down of at this workplace or your work environment and um yeah so I, that's why I, and I felt like the neck was a bit felt a bit more restricting rather than weighting down so that's why I chose the foot um for the actual set design I didn't want there to be a stage I wanted it to be a room and uh, be plain white and to show almost like a void but that is limitless but still feel um, a bit like claustrophobic because I think with this like room. Um, so the audience would be um, the same level with the actors and I feel like that really will connect them and um, keep them thinking and I wanted to have the tree still be um, very like classic but showing a nod to um, surrealism artist which is why I wanted to have a small clock like um, Salvador Dali if you see um, in this little circle um, a small like almost melting clock to show kind of um, the how the concept of time is kind of just crazy in the in that world. Um, yeah, I think I covered everything. Brilliant, thank you, Savannah. Uh, just one question for me. Um, so you've got this idea of uh, surrealism, okay, which uh, you explained really nicely, um, and you've got all of these modern day costumes. So you've got this, the the room with the surrealist set in, and then modern day costumes. What do you think is the impact on the audience of having those two things together? Um, I think, like I was saying before, I feel like it really shows how well relevant the art style is even in you there's some 
um, more mod like modernism and surrealism are really linked. Um, this is talking about art. So I feel like um, I think it really it shows the relevance of the um, like the feelings that the surrealism captures. Okay, so how does because obviously surrealism you gave the the historic dates there for sur surrealism. It's not that's not a contemporary style of of art, is it? Whereas your costumes are contemporary. Um, what does that? How does that link with the text? Um, well, I wanted the surrealism to show the how like. Um, can I give this element of um, this element of like um, almost like the fever dream that I was talking about and I feel like the themes in the script and that link with surrealism I was I was trying to bring them in to the modern people that's why I wanted uh, to keep the clothes more modern okay great so when you talk about the set being a room mm -hmm. where do your audience go I wanted them either like thrust right like yeah so on three sides I wanted that yeah so they so the audience would be in really quite intimate with the performance yeah. Okay, super. Any other questions from anybody? I have one. Go for it. Um, can you go into a little further detail about how the uh, not necessarily direct relationship between Pazzo and Lucky's character and Estragon and Vladimir's character is existing, but how they may link together in the overall concept of the piece. Does that make sense? Um, <laughs> um, like how the, the characters think to the concept? Uh, yes. Okay, so um, if we look back, I wanted to um, have like, show that young and old relationship to um, kind of what I said uh, previously of how I wanted to show the relevancy of these thoughts to um, a variety of like audience. So having a young Estragon, um, you could, it has like, it feels like he kind of hasn't figured it out and is looking for guidance and everything. And that would, that's why he kind of like looks up to Vladimir and always like asking his question about um, Gordo and everything. And with Pozo and Lucky, I just, I, I wanted to um, break that theme of um, of like unnatural time, and because I feel like you didn't you without you don't really see kind of um, where they are too much or like uh, their roles in the world, if you get what I mean. Um, so I wanted Pause on Lucky to kind of be that reality check of um, having the world, like society, just going on without you or, or trying to reel you in. Um, yeah, whilst you're kind of having a little existential crisis, if you will. Okay, thank you very much, Silvana, well done. You can stop the recording now.